can help us out here. We're now live. Okay, good to know. Hello, <laughs> my name is Erin DeLathauer. Welcome to um, the University of Saskatchewan's Open House and the College of Arts and Sciences first um, webinar session on the humanities, social sciences, and the Bachelor of Arts. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to just begin as we do um, at pretty much any kind of gathering that we have um, at the university with a land acknowledgement. So even though we're gathering here today in a virtual space, this space is really rooted in Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. In this place, we recognize our gratitude for the land that we are connected to. The University of Saskatchewan pays respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place, and together we strive to reconcile and to reaffirm our relationships with one another. So welcome again, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So I'm, I'm here to talk a little bit about the College of Arts and Science and a little bit about humanities, social sciences, and Bachelor of Arts programs. So to begin with, um, uh, a little bit of background on the college. We are really a very unique college in Canada. Um, there are um, it, you know, several different disciplines um, from the arts and the sciences, and together researchers, faculty, students get to work together across those disciplinary lines in one sort of collegial environment. We have a long history of working together across disciplinary lines. Our college was established in 1908. We have more than 60 different areas of study, uh, 21 different departments. Um, so every traditional discipline will have its own department um, and roughly 10,000 current students in our college. So um, that's a pretty big college. It's certainly the largest college by far at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, when you come to the University of Saskatchewan, if you're an arts and science student, you'll definitely be taking classes. And even if you're a student in another college, you'll very likely be taking at least some arts and science classes. Um, okay, so what's the advantage of being an arts and science student? Um, our students are very fortunate because they can take courses in the sciences, the social sciences, the humanities, and the fine arts, regardless of your major. So that means that you have a lot of freedom to choose, to change your mind, to um, find your strengths, and, and really um, combine different experiences to make your university education your own. Um, you're also going to be uh, acquiring skills in quantitative reasoning, in writing, English language writing, and Indigenous learning. Those are the sort of core components of our college uh, curriculum. You'll be gaining real-world experiences through undergraduate research, through internships and practicums, field school and community-engaged learning opportunities. Um, and you'll be studying under some of the most well-known researchers in the world in their fields. A lot of students don't realize that USASC is a, a, a very, um, an excellent research uh, university. And so your teachers, your professors are going to be sort of at the cutting edge of research in their fields. And that's quite exciting to be. Mm, there we are. <laughs> Hopefully we're back now. My apologies. Um, I'm not sure where I left off. Thank you, Anna. Um, 
I think I was answering a question about uh, class sizes. Somebody asked how big classes are with so many students, and it really depends on the subject area. So in the social sciences and the humanities, classes can be a very reasonably reasonable size. And also many classes will have um, labs, seminars, tutorials, where you're in with a smaller group. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, getting to know a small group of students in a little bit as well. I'm just going to move on for now. I'm probably going to try to address some of the questions at the end as well so that we can get through all of these slides too. So I wanted to take you through the disciplines that we do offer majors in, um, in the humanities. Humanities focus on the critical, historical, and cultural aspects of human existence. So we have, um, as you can see there, uh, majors in classical, medieval, and Renaissance studies, English, French, history, modern languages, philosophy, religion and culture, and women's and gender studies. And in the social sciences, there are too many to read off, but you can see that the social sciences focus on how people, communities, and societies function. So you'll see um, you know, anthropology and archaeology, health studies, linguistics, um, political studies, psychology, sociology, and so on. Lots of different uh, options to choose from. And I'll just note that we do have a number of program representatives, faculty and students who are here today to chat with you live. And you can access those live sessions through the, um, through the live session tab, uh, the same way you access this one. So feel free to jump into those sessions and chat with people that are doing something that sounds interesting to you. Um, okay. So what's the value of doing a Bachelor of Arts? Really studying subjects in the humanities and the social sciences prepares students with the flexible, adaptable, and enduring skills that employers are really looking for. Skills like writing and communication, qualitative research, critical thinking. What is that? We always hear that. It's like seeing a problem from multiple different points of view. Empathy, seeing something from another person's point of view. <laughs> um, create, creative problem solving, conflict resolution, independent thinking, time management, initiative. Employers are looking for all of these kinds of skills. Um, we're also going to just briefly watch a, a video here. So I'm going to ask Anna to cue this up and we'll hear from some of our students and faculty in it. Anna? Perfect. I think we just need to wait to, to play the video. My apologies. Here it comes. There we go. The College of Arts and Science allows students to do um, courses both in arts and science and allows for a very rich background that students don't have at all universities. I am major in psychology. I am a graduate of English. Honors degree in philosophy with a minor in political studies. I have a Bachelor of Arts honors in regional urban planning. I teach linguistics. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Political Studies and International Studies. You're able to explore different options alongside your major option. It really shapes not just looking from how you want to see the world, but how other disciplines and how other people are seeing the world. You learn to step outside of your comfort zone, to think in an abstract way, to learn to form your opinions based on evidence, not based on hearsay. It's not just about learning new things, it's also about uh, identifying yourself in the things you learn. It's so much more than discipline that I'm studying, it's kind of like a, it's become my way of life and my way of thinking and living, which is really important to me. I think the U of S allows students to think outside the box, gives them the skills that they need to be able to work in incredibly different fields. They're going to be able to engage in pushing important things forward, uh, things that are critical like climate change or our economy or our political structure. People need idea makers, people to think creatively. Develop something the world has never even thought about before. And I think the Bachelor of Arts provided me with that well-rounded education, so I have a wide variety of transferable skills. The skills that I've gained is being more confident with who I am and using my voice and feeling like I'm not scared to take up space as an Indigenous person, especially as a woman. So I can take the skills that I've learned and I can 
kind of imagine the different ways that I can apply them to different occupations. And as I progressed throughout my degree, I realized that my Bachelor of Arts could get me anywhere. Now I'm giving back now, so I feel great about that. That's great. Are we back to slides now, Anna? I'm not sure. Hopefully you can see this. Um, okay, great, excellent. So, um, so yeah, as you can see in the little short film, um, a degree, a Bachelor of Arts can really take you anywhere. Um, there are lots of different career paths out there. I have a few listed here on this slide. This is not exhaustive by any means, but it does include some things that maybe students haven't really thought about before. Um, lots of students will do a BA if they're aiming for law. That's, you know, lots of people think about lawyers, teachers, doctors. I've definitely known students who have done a BA and gone on to, to study medicine as well. Um, but there are a lot of other career paths, a lot of opportunities that people don't really think about, like a city planner or um, an events coordinator or an international relations consultant or human rights advocate, a writer, a journalist, a publisher. All of these kinds of jobs exist, right? <laughs> and um, it really is the case uh, that, you know, Contrary to popular opinion, I think at times, you can work in any sector of the economy with a Bachelor of Arts degree. It certainly has been my experience that the skills um, that you gain from a BA really are the kinds of skills that employers are looking for. So at the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Arts and Science, we believe really strongly in um, being able to um, have students get their hands dirty, right? To, to actually do some things, some hands-on learning, experiential learning. Um, there will be undergraduate research opportunities that you can access right from your first year with first year research experience classes. Um, so where you're going to actually produce your own um, um, novel research. There are internship opportunities in economics and English and political studies and so on. There are lots of different internship courses you can take where you get experience. Um, field courses in anthropology and archaeology, performances, exhibits. Of course, you don't have to be a music major to be in the um, concert band or to audition for the new U of S Saskatoon or the new U of S uh, uh, orchestra. And there are study abroad opportunities as well. These are coming back soon. We're optimistic about them. Um, so stay tuned for that opportunity to study abroad, to take a class abroad, so where you uh, go with a teacher from the University of Saskatchewan to another location and take a class. Lots of opportunities there. I do want to talk a little bit about certificates in arts and science as well. Um, certificates are a really good option for um, students who are maybe not quite sure what they want to pursue right off the bat. They might start with a certificate. Um, here are just a couple that, uh, that, I've, that I've chosen from the long list, which I'm going to show you next, that might be of interest to you. The Ethics, Justice, and Law Certificate. This consists of about five, well, exactly five philosophy classes. There's a Global Studies Certificate and a Criminology and Addiction Certificate. In fact, there are lots and lots of certificates. Here's a whole list of them. And what's really nice about them is that they can be completed either before or during or after a degree. So that means that courses that you take that work towards any one of these certificates could also at the same time work towards electives or breadth requirements or even major requirements in your degree. So um, it's important to know about them in advance because planning your um, course selection is important if you want to achieve both a certificate and a degree, but it is definitely possible and something to watch out for. I often think about certificates as a really good way of distinguishing yourself, right? So if you're thinking about um, uh, going out into the world and you have a degree and you have a certificate as well, you can kind of talk about that as, 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 um, as a way of showing your, the breadth of your knowledge and breadth of experience. Okay. Another thing I really want to quickly touch on here are learning communities. There was a question earlier on about how big our college is and uh, is that maybe a drawback when it comes to class sizes. One thing that's really quite unique about the University of Saskatchewan is that it does feel like a community despite its size. And the college in particular has paid extra special attention to making sure that students feel a sense of community, a sense of um, 
a sense of you know feeling welcome, feeling a part of it. And that's really achieved through learning communities. There are a number of different kinds of learning communities on offer, and these are really targeting first years. There are some for second years as well, but it's something to think about if you're thinking about coming into arts and science. Learning communities basically bring you together with a small group of other like-minded students. Um, so maybe taking the same, um, uh, you'll be taking some of the same classes together. So you might be headed in a similar direction when it comes to a major, when it comes to um, a profession. Um, they are, there are also learning communities specifically designed for Indigenous students, the ISAP program. And there are learning communities for students who are maybe a little bit like, uh, like I was in high school, where, um, you know, your, your high school marks maybe aren't reflective of your academic potential. That can happen for a lot of reasons. And so we do have the transition program learning communities as well for students who, um, who don't, don't quite meet that 70% average at the end of grade 12. So uh, lots of things to think about there. Um, I'm going to advance the slide. There are just a few more slides and then we'll take questions. Oh, I was going to say, don't take my word for it. <laughs> Talk to students. So we have a wonderful website uh, where you can actually chat one on one with students anytime, not just today. Um, so if you go to artsandscience.usas.ca slash chat with a student, you can find a student who's maybe studying something that you're interested in, or maybe they're living in residence and you want to find out more about what that's like. Students will give you, our student ambassadors are here to really give you a sense of what it's like to be a student in arts and science. And so I'd encourage you all to, you know, visit this site and chat with a student. Okay, questions. So as I mentioned earlier, we do have um, um, and opportunities to chat with faculty and students, um, both at two o'clock and then again at three o'clock. Um, so you can see there, there, all of the different disciplines you can find out a little bit more about in those chat sessions. Um, you can also visit the arts and science booth. I know there were a lot of students there just before I left. Um, so that's great. You can talk one-on-one -on -one with our um, advisors and, uh, and staff. But I do want to also reserve a little bit of time now for some questions. And I'm actually going to ask Sahil if he's on speaker, if he's available, if, if, he's, yep. uh, if there were some questions that came in that he flagged. For sure. So one of the questions was uh, looking at the degree of psychology, if it is a social science discipline, which I'm assuming is an arts discipline, or a science degree. Well, you can do either one. You can do a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. It's the only discipline that's uh, uh, in Arts and Science that's like that, where there are two different options. So, um, and you don't have to decide right away. Um, in fact, well, maybe Sahil should be speaking to this since he's a, <laughs> since he's a BA in Psychology. He's a Psych major. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I know the course offering between the two is a little bit different with the B, uh, the BS in psychology or the BSC, I guess, in psychology, having a couple additional science classes that you have to take versus when you go with the BA route in psychology, you don't have to take those science classes. So for me personally, um, those just weren't as interesting for me, those science classes. So I decided just to go with the BA route. And I made that decision, I think in my third year of university, uh, and to start off, I was thinking just I'll pick either route and I'll kind of decide along the road. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's great. Uh, are there any internships in psychology? Well, not that I'm aware of. Not any internship courses anyway, or that I'm that I'm aware of. Um, but there are sometimes opportunities, oftentimes opportunities to get some experience working in labs. So um, a lot of the psychology department is quite large and there's a lot of really interesting research going on. So as an undergraduate student, there are sometimes opportunities to get some lab experience. So working that way, sometimes those, those experiences are paid. Sometimes it's summer work. Um, it depends on whether or not the faculty member you're working with or, or for has, has, a, has a good grant. Um, um, but as far as I know, there aren't any internship courses in psychology. I do see another question here about internships being, are they all paid? So the internship courses, they're, they're not paid. They're, they're, you're actually taking a course and you're um, going out into an organization and getting some hands-on experience, but you get credit for that course, right? Um, 
Uh, there are some internship programs that are paid in the college. Those exist in computer science, um, where you actually take a full like year, 12 to 16 months away from the university and work in a company. And I believe physics is the other one that has um, a, a full on internship program rather than an internship course. So hopefully that answers that question. There's a question about sociology as well. The sociology degree is a social science and you would be getting a BA in sociology. Um, oh, this is a good question as well about the math courses. Yes, um, there is a quantitative learning requirement for all students in the College of Arts and Science. Um, and what's great about, and, and well, what's great about that when it comes to psychology or sociology, uh, that requirement will be fulfilled with your statistics course that you take for, for that discipline. But I should also mention for others who are here and maybe a little bit nervous about math, <laughs> that can happen, certainly. We do have another math course that's specifically designed for students who are maybe not, maybe maybe didn't have the opportunity to, to do well in math and in school um, or didn't have the opportunity to take a grade 12 math class. Um, there are some other classes that you can take at the university. And in particular, there's Math 101, which is um, a, a qualitative or quantitative reasoning course. Um, and it's quite a different approach to math and one that I think a lot of students who are interested in a BA might really appreciate. Um, it's much more sort of text focused and focused on critical thinking and thinking about the pro like real world problems and applying mathematical thinking to the real world problems. Can I talk about the criminology and addiction certificate? Have I missed any, Sahil? Did I miss any questions? Uh, no, I think the only question was, is there any internships in sociology? Oh, oh, you're seconding that for that. Oh, I thought that was a question about the BA. Um, but there is actually, there. I'm going to talk about that in the criminology and addiction certificate. There's a practicum. Um, and so that is, I don't believe that is paid. That is part of the certificate in criminology and addictions. So that is something that really does um, give a student quite a bit of experience in um, working in a community organization, working firsthand with, um, with addictions. Um, and so, uh, so that, that I think that would be the best sort of community engaged opportunity that I can think of through sociology. The criminology and addiction certificate is a little bit different from some of the other certificates in that you do you have to apply to get in. Um, it's quite a competitive uh, certificate. And the reason why is because of those practicum placements. Um, so it's really important not to sort of flood our community with students who need to do a practicum to get a certificate, right? We have to be really careful about, um, you know, placing students appropriately in community organizations. And so there is an application for that particular certificate. Um, how long is it? What are the requirements applying? These are all really, really good, great questions. And what I'm going to do actually is I am going to, um, for, for, for uh, Angel Marie, I'm going to suggest that you go at three o'clock to talk with Shayla Batty, um, who is a departmental representat representative from sociology, who can answer those really wonderful and specific questions about the criminology and addiction certificate. She'll be uh, much better at, answer at addressing those questions. And also, um, she's just a really wonderful person to speak with. She's a master's student in sociology. Um, so that's kind of my recommendation there. Can a Bachelor of Science in Psychology be applicable undergrad for med? Yes, yes, for medical school. Um, that's a great question. Um, in fact, it's kind of a misconception out there that you need to have a Bachelor of Science to get into med school. That's not true. Um, there have been students who have gotten into med school with a music degree, with a Bachelor of Arts, for sure. Um, basically, what you need to get into medicine is a four-year degree, bachelor's degree, any kind of degree, and uh, the MCAT, right? Oh, actually, Sahil could be answering this, too, since he's currently... Uh, uh, applying to med schools in the Casper. <laughs> so there are some other standardized tests. Uh, what else do you need, Sahil? Uh, for USASC, it's uh, as of right now, it's just the MCAT, your grades, the Casper, and then if you get invited to an interview, it's an interview. Yeah. Um, and then I think they have like a criminal record check yeah. and some of well, those and, other and, types of things. Yeah. And you're doing the BA in psychology. How did that prepare you for the MCAT? 
Uh, the BA in Psych, I think, did a pretty good job of preparing me for the MCAT. So I definitely took my introductory uh, chemistries, biologies, physics. Uh, I know some of them were more of the ele of my electives, like the physics was definitely an elective course for me. Uh, but I did do that, and definitely the psychology really helped me with the psychology sociology section, which is the last section of the MCAT. And I found it also helped me with the uh, critical analysis and reasoning reasoning section, because it really reading all these psychology papers helped me prepare to read better. So when I kind of got to that section there, I felt. I think a little bit better prepared and it really helped me out there as well. Yeah. 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 I think that's true. Being able to sort of critically examine text is a really important part of, of, of being a doctor. And so that's, that is measured. So yeah, um, you can basically take all of the classes that you need, that you need the content knowledge of for the MCAT, regardless of what degree you're doing. So, that's important to bear in mind. I always say, you know, don't worry too much about which bachelor's degree you're, you're actually going to get because they're all very valuable, right? Um, your bachelor's degree is, uh, it's going to equip you with the kind of skills and breadth of knowledge that will prepare you for any professional college that will prepare you for many different professions as well. So I hope that helps to answer that question. Um, I see we are actually have a couple of extra minutes. Does anyone have any additional questions they'd like to ask in this context? Okay. Well, I certainly hope to see some of you um, at the booth, at the Arts and Science booth. Um, both Sahil and I are there, as well as some other folks from the college. Um, but I think that if there are no other questions here, we will, we will go ahead and end the session. Thank you all for coming. Um, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Take care.